So let's do it. <laughs> we're, we're starting over fresh. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. Welcome back. We are starting a little bit late today. We're trying to add in some cool new features, but uh, <laughs> yeah, watch the intro accidentally. Okay, okay, let okay, okay. Since we have a little of that, just a quick okay, chit chat. My thought. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm totally cool now. Okay, because we're so fr like uh, frustrated and a little bit panicky, we got really hot in the room. So mm. here we go, my super mini, super mini fan. Yes, yeah, so it's a really mini fan, almost not effective because it takes so much energy to generate a wind you actually start yeah. to sweat when using he despised that yeah i don't like this fan so improvement because we want to make our video experience a little bit more uh you know fluffy stuff so we were thinking about adding the music which like i think that, we like succeed. what they just saw oh the, in that two minutes that they will hear the no i just did something but you keep talking okay Forget i pretend okay. i didn't say anything so music, that's what we added. Then you will see our fancy, now we have borders in our little windows. Another improvement. <laughs> mm -hmm. And transition. You guys probably saw that the little guy went yep. in and out. So for those, that's why we did several yes. videos just to test drive if that works. And furthermore, to make it even more, um, I guess slightly frustrating for me is I was in here at noon getting everything set up, testing everything, making sure he everything got that works. like an hour or two ago. Ev everything was working super smooth. I was so confident when we started. So we had a bit of a rocky start, but the important thing is, is that we're here mm -hmm. and, um, and we've got tea brewing. I see that Bai you guys have tea brewing too. Yes, um, what are you drinking, Josh? We're drinking some Bai Shui Xiang. It's a rock tea. And um, this is quite floral, actually. Creamy mm, floral. Really nice, really nice. So we, uh, it's a quite a, uh, it's a new cultivar. The cultivar name is the Bai Sui Xiang, and uh, it's more to the um, lighter side of the rock tea. It's mm. a good introduction tea. Really great introduction to Yan Cha, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no sacrifice to the um, to the Yan Cha experience, but still a gentle, a sort of a gentle putting your toe in the water before you dive into your rogue and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Um, yeah, so, and it looks like George popped over. I assume that's George who we saw over, uh, sorry, George from uh, Instagram, because it was a really long George, drinking a 2010 Chaumet and uh, also flushing hot. Ha, huh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, goes with the tea. Mm -hmm. And Josh has got a Bai Mudan. Uh, he blended himself from aged and fresh batches. Oh, oh nice. cool, with a cold brew, nice. Nice. Okay, cool. So white tea there. Yeah, so again, for uh, George, you're going to get to hear this twice, but we, we got to redo it because <laughs> the YouTube didn't get it. So Sunday yeah. Tea Book, what is it all about? All right, this is where we, we grab uh, a book, an article, or a paper that is written in Chinese, full of great information, but really hard to access in the West. Hard to find. Maybe, the, maybe it's translated, but maybe the translation is not so good, like the case with our current book. Um, and... The reason we're doing this is, one, obviously to get you that great information into your hands and into your cups, uh, I guess, uh, by the end of it, but also so that you can get behind the scenes with the, uh, with the process of translating. And I found for myself, this has been a way that really expand my understanding of tea and the culture behind it. How come things uh, get confused? It also gives you great insight into why those things can happen and uh, what to watch for, just all kinds of great information. Um, so, and as always, chip in with your comments and questions. Um, uh, be as detailed as possible so we can remember the section that you're referring to or figure out the section that you're referring to. And don't be shy, ask us anything. And um, yeah, uh, this is for you guys. So definitely, mm. the more you chip in, the more we're yes, all going to get out absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're continuing uh, the book by my mom, China Tea, China Tea, and uh, today the content is mostly for tea drinkers of how to choose tea. What are the simple ways? It's actually a great. We will have a great application. Real meat and in potatoes. Real, real yeah, really real good life. brewing, uh, mm -hmm. useful information you can take to yeah. your tea table. You can take to the tea shop. Really yeah. great and stuff. And the amount of tea leaf you should put and stuff. And so it's yeah. a really like awesome. good awesome. session. Awesome. Awesome. And the way we're going to approach it, um, as you can see, we're going to throw the book up on, or as you saw a moment ago, the book will be up on the screen. I'm going to read a section, and then I'm going to talk about what I think I understood or what I understood from it, and parts that I found confusing, 
And uh, Jen is going to jump in if I miss anything completely because she can mm. read the Chinese side that I cannot read. I'm bringing sort of the Western flavor, uh, maybe a newcomer to tea perspective. You guys are going to jump in too if I miss if I miss something that you guys are like. Well, what about this other section? By all means, please. And you can also help us with the translation because sometimes we will oh, have yeah. problem finding、mm -hmm. the right words、mm -hmm. or the more、Definitely. accurate.、Uh, Expression or、yep. as tea in terms of tea terms and a lot of things are still open to discussion. You that、uh, yep. you know, like、uh, you guys can definitely chip in and help yeah, us with、bet. that. And of course, after the、um, after the tea reads done here, check the description down below. Shortly after, we're going to post the link to the finished translation, which is over on our blog. You can go and check it out there and use it as a reference for later if you need to come back to it. And as always, if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button with the notification bell so you'll know whenever we go live. Maybe several times, trying to get warmed up to it, <laughs> and、um, and give us a thumbs up if you like the content in today's video.、All、Absolutely,、right. let's get started. So let me switch over to the book. Oh, here we go. We also got a mini remote. All right, there we go. Did you see that transition? That's pretty hot, right? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna and I'm gonna get on with reading. So here we go. So here we go. China tea, as Jen said. So last week we covered、um, appreciating、uh, appreciating as an expert right here, and today we're going to cover these two sections: skills for choosing tea and the amount of tea. So super useful, real down to earth material. We may refer back to the Chinese section、uh, after, but for now we're going to get started with skills for choosing tea. I'm going to do my best to read exactly what's here. So sometimes it may sound a little bit、um, <laughs> whoosh. It may sound a little bit weird, but I'm going to try and be true to exactly what is written. So first, I got to water myself up a bit. All right. Skills for choosing tea. Looking at its appearance, then the soup, and finally looking at the back of leaves. These are the basic methods to purchase tea. However, many people do not have the professional knowledge about tea. You might try the following easy way as well, which is called one making method, which is helpful for us to select our favorite tea. Quote: Whether the tea has complete and colorful leaf, strong or light fragrance, attractive taste, etc., or not. End quote. These are all specialists' criterion to evaluate. In fact, our standard is just if it is not bitter and can be durable to brew. Therefore, while purchasing, we just depend on our mouth, which is the unique criterion to judge: is it good or not? <laughs> did you read something? Yes, sorry, I, I read Josh's comment. That's old school Batman. That's right. As soon as he said it, oh yeah, yeah. Mmm. Pow. Right. Right. Kablam. All right. So back to the section skills for choosing tea. So、mm. para one,、uh, it kind of refers back to our old three looks, right? It starts、yes. with a little bit of.、Uh, so if you want to go back and check that episode, yes, it talks about the um, the um, three looks, three smells, three tastes, three aftertastes. Those、mm. were kind of refers back to that. That's on、uh, episode five. Yeah, that's right. But then it talks about this one making method, which intrigued me. So my first thought was,、uh, oh boy, is this like what is this one making method? So don't worry, that's coming up in detail. But I think I was a bit off track because my first suspicion was that this was cupping. But、uh, right. I think it's kind of an in between. Yeah, just before we go to that, I just want to because、mm. of this one, if you're just tuning in for this episode, it talk about、mm. uh, appearance is pretty clear. It means the dry leaf.、Uh, soup sometimes might be a.、Uh, A little bit of confusing、right. is because in Chinese、uh, we call the tea liquor we call tea soup, cha tang,、mm. is as a, a more、uh, pro like a, a more specific way of calling it. That's why here got to translate directly into soup,、so mm. which means the tea liquor, and the back of the leaf. That's not the back of the leaf. Yeah,、we'll、okay. Talk about that.、Point. That's the、right. bottom. <laughs> so it's the brewed Chinese, leaf, yes, right? Brewed leaf. Chinese、mm. call that uh, the uh, 叶底 means the leaf bottom, but it means the brewed leaf. So、oh, right, yeah, no, yeah. that's a good, really good ones. We covered those last week, but you're right. It's good to come back to them. The back of the leaves. What is that? Right.、Um, so、uh, 
what you made, what you said was right. One making uh, method, like uh, you can guess, that's almost like copying, which mm. means you only brew that once. However, um, later on we will realize that this is also not quite copying. It has the essence of copying, right. but not quite the same. Right, right, which we're going to get into. Right. So in then in para two, I the I called out the quotes on purpose because I was sort of when I read it, I was like, is this another quote from um, the classic of tea, or is it a quote a, a really well known quote? Because it's weird that it's in quotes. I, I felt it was a little bit odd that it was in quotes without mm. any context, but um, it might not be anything. It might just be. It's a quote from previous. Ah. Those are what we talk about again in episode five, like last week, talking about how to look, how the colors, the aroma, the taste, mm. and stuff. Mm. Uh, so this is a, it's not quoted from classics of tea. I see. I see. So. The Chinese uh, in written form, we put that in the quote. It kind of just say this section, which uh, explains refers right. to this is expert's way of a uh, appraise yes, tea. Yes. How to appraise tea? Those are what you are looking at. But for daily drinkers, those normal people, normal people, yeah, like uh, just uh, you know tea lovers, we a lot of uh, of us don't have the ability to really know Absolutely. how to appraise them. Yes. So. We don't and that's have to what stick I love about those. this section, and that's what the second part seems to, or sets, right? right. Um, base it, our 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 criteria are simple. Basically, is it not bitter? Does it have a bit of longevity? Like, i.e., can it be a brood uh, a few times? And it focus on my one of my favorite messages, and you'll hear this all the time on our channel and all of our videos. It's all about mm. your mouth and your taste. Mm. That is the criterion for is that a good tea, yeah. which I love. Mm. Is that good? I think that covers it. I think so. Hey, JS, welcome to the stream. Hello. We're just on uh, the next section. We're going to go into the one making method now. Um, so I'll carry on okay. after a little sip. <clears throat> All right. One making method is the best way to judge if it is good or bad. The methods are as follows. Firstly, put three grams of tea, which can cover the bottom of the bowl, into 150 ml of water which was in the ordinary tea bowl and brew. Then taste the soup in five to 10 minutes to check whether you can accept the taste or not. Mm -hmm. Then fetch another spoon and watch the color of the soup. If it is murky, the leaf may not have baked well. If it is light, maybe the leaves were picked early or did not ferment well. If the leaves are overbaked, they are brown and broken. For good tea, the color is bright and thick according to the species and making methods no matter it is light yellow dark yellow or golden it looks lovely and colorful finally take a smell of the spoon if it is good tea the fragrance will remain on the spoon although it is cold the principle to choose tea lies in putting tea leaves but more water and longer immersing in this way the advantages or disadvantages are fully presented not being hesitant if the tea is full of fragrance, rich in the taste, no bitter, good after tasting, and in reasonable price. Okay, that's a pretty big section. Let's head back to para one. This is pretty good, actually. Para one is a, sort of the basic instructions. Um, you put oh, how to yeah, kind of a yeah three grams brew. of tea and one fifty ml of water, five to ten minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, taste. Yes. Now here that uh, uh, it was. Uh, Oh, the English didn't say specific in Chinese was talking about Gai Wan. But I, I just want to point out that uh, there's no, you know, you can use a soup bowl or kitchen, anything. Right. Right. It really doesn't matter. It has to be a Gai Wan or mm -hmm. it has to be uh, a certain vessel. It's just, it's the logistic of this method that matters. Right. 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 Yes, that's a great point. It said tea bowl. But that's a little bit obscure. A if you're new, yeah. If you're new to tea, you might not know that's a guy one. She probably doesn't know how to translate that. So that's mm. why it's a tea bowl. Right, right. And you could mm. probably even use a glass as long as you get the ratio right. You can see through it. Um, Absolutely. That would work pretty well yeah. too. The only thing, if I have to point out, is maybe just to don't use a porous vessel because mm. that absorb the uh, aroma. Very so good other point. than that, you know, glass. Stainless steel, glazed, uh, glazed, um, glazed, you know, porcelain, porcelain yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. It all mm -hmm. works. 
Yeah. So Josh has a question about temperature. Was that recommended for one make method? I don't think it was specified. Yeah, you're right. Actually, you're that's a great question. Right. It wasn't uh, specified. Uh, I first I don't know why it wasn't specified. Mm. I, but I just took my guess is for us Chinese there is no question. You put boiling right. water, so. We, you really, like now, I mean, in the recent 10 years, maybe more people are getting into the tea, tea tasting and stuff. They're more careful, but they're not like 85 is a 80 kind of different. Mm -hmm. It's slightly cool. In old times, we, and a lot of times when you talk to Chinese about the boiling water, you, if take the scientific mind, you realize our boiling water, a lot of times are not boiling. Right, it doesn't have to be freshly boiled. We have those uh, thermos that we put hot water in. Mm -hmm. We boil mm -hmm. water. We put that. You see that in Sichuan. Yes, that's right? right. Yeah, they bring it to your table so that you can do gongfu at your yeah, table. Yeah, and then you can multiple infusion mm -hmm. that and add mm -hmm. it. So those are thermos, uh, boiling water, put in the thermos, and the, they keep hot. So that's just the hot water we use, right? Same with you going to train stations or airport anywhere you go there's a uh, boiling water but mm. if you measure it i bet it's probably only 80 to 90. yeah but that's why i think one of the reason in a lot of uh, books it, especially when this is kind of a rough talk about how to uh, just get this uh, going rather than right. a specific brewing methods i think that might be the reason it wasn't specified it's just using that kind of boiling water you have at home yeah yeah guessing that was my assumption too, but I'm glad you called it out and, uh, and, mm. and it's great to specify that because that's Absolutely. a really common question among people getting into tea. Um, and I think because we're evaluating it, right, I think mm. I would boil and like kind of freshly boiled as close as I could get is what I would want. Um, because you'll see what's going on here in the in the subsequent paragraphs, right? Mm. As we're trying to get all the good and bad out. And this method is interesting till you see the end, which you kind mm -hmm. of read. Yeah, so, so para two, let's just move along into para two then. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of, it also in the English, it didn't really uh, specify to taste it, but it says, see if you can accept the taste, but now you fetch a spoon, so ah. it threw me off a little bit. Okay, and okay, that's actually a very good point mm. about uh, accept the taste. Mm. Uh, you might think I have to love the taste mm. or something, then I said, uh, I just, uh, um, Thank you, because I totally forgot. This is no, actually a very really important point, point. Why? And uh, I think accept is the right translation as the in the original Chinese. It wasn't do you like the taste? Because this way of brewing is not going to render the best of right. the tea. It's not going to bring like out the It's like a best. stress yeah. test. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. And uh, this is to see the bottom line of this tea. Can you accept that? Yeah. Then when you are brewing at your home, no matter how you brew, it tastes better than that. So mm. all you need to do is a uh, kind of accept that. But if you love it, that's even better than you're yes. guaranteed to have a good sip. Yes, yes, right. there you go. That's a great one too. Um, so then in para two, um, it's pretty again pretty okay. Murky shows that you had some drying problems. It talks about the lightness of the flavor might lead mean that it was early pluck or under. They use the word fermented, but I believe they're Oxidation. talking about under oxidized. And I think we can yes. spend two seconds on that because yeah, you're that's, perfect. That's, that's, that's perfect. a really important and confusing tea term that you'll hear in English tea circles and all, uh, and it gets muddy sometimes. So for our purpose, we'll clarify that, right? So this book called it fermentation, but they're actually talking about the oxidation process, which is, um, technically like the and it's like when a banana turns brown and then and the name of it is enzymatic browning uh, and it's a process that we have in uh, oolong tea we call that semi-oxidized or you'll sometimes hear people call it semi-fermented but what they mean is semi-oxidized um, black tea we call it quote unquote fully oxidized why is it in quotes because it's not fully oxidized is actually rotten uh, but we're not going to let it rot we're going to get it to that point where it's fully done and it's right. it's perfectly done so again that's a good indication but all of those are oxidation mm. we reserve in our discussions around tea like on gen tea in our dialogue we'll reserve the word fermentation for those dark teas uh hecha dark tea puar 
啊，千两茶、六包茶啊啊，千千 those kind of things which have a piling step and、mm. they undergo micro microbial fermentation.、Mm. So I think fermentation is a nice fit with that and shouldn't be mixed up with oxidation. That's my opinion. I don't think it's the end of the world by any means. But in this paragraph, back to our book, definitely talking about that light flavor being related to under oxidized tea. Okay, and、um, broken and brown leaves mean maybe the drying was too harsh or overdone.、Mm. Uh, pretty straight up.、Uh, yes. And did they get into the good tea? Yes. So and、yeah. they give you a couple criteria for a good tea.、Right. Bright, you know, just like this, right? Bright.、Yeah. You can't taste it, but if you can taste it, you'll know that it's a nice thick liquor. So bright, thick liquor.、Mm -hmm. um, again, not murky,、mm -hmm. and but depends on process, right? And they give some color hints, right? Light、mm -hmm. yellow, dark yellow, golden. You start with a spoon. The spoon.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, can do you mind show them the? Not at all.、Chinese. Let's go back up to the.、Uh, I don't think it's a major thing, but I just want to point out the. You know. Yes. Here we go. Uh, you can see. Uh, highlighter, highlighter, huh? Oh right, right. Are you excited? I am. I'm a <laughs> left-hand highlighter right here. Here, here we go.、Uh, I was just want to point out the spoon that here you see is a Chinese spoon. The difference is mostly because it holds the liquid a little bit better.、Mm. You don't have if you don't have this kind of spoon, you can use Western spoon or just pour some out in、mm. a cup. I don't think yeah, a spoon the, is a very clear teacup or something. Yeah, you don't want to burn yourself. And also,、uh, not also. Yeah, Sorry, so that was that's、like、a really good one because、um, yes. to like you said, they could use a bowl, but then if、mm. they use a Western spoon, the volume is going to be a bit lower.、Mm -mm. Um, and also, the the spoons are typically made of porcelain,、mm -hmm. which I find our spoons are typically stainless. Yeah, there's going to be I think you, there's going to be an aroma impact. I think with stainless. Yeah, yeah. True. I think you're better off you're to、right. stick with、uh, a glass.、Uh, a glass would be fine. A little glass, just to get some、mm. out. I think、mm. that would be sufficient. Yeah,、um, you know, you can improvise.、Uh, if you have something that you use to、uh, smell liquor, a small little glass for smelling liquor, that would probably work too.、Mm -hmm. You know, anything like that, you can totally improvise. Yes. I yes. I want to tell. I once made a guy one out of a sugar bowl、uh, mm. and a saucer lid. Because I didn't have a guy one with me, I was traveling, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Never hesitate to improvise. Absolutely, it's just watch out, don't burn yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So、um, the just to quickly touch on the the quote unquote technical aspect about that,、uh, if because、uh, here it says if it's a、uh, uh, murky, it's because、uh, the insufficient. It says、uh, it's not baked well. It's actually not baked. It means、uh, like、uh, it refers to like、uh, green tea or like、um, especially green tea where the, the it's the kill green. Kill green wasn't oh, sufficient. Oh, that's very. So very that's a tea term that wasn't、uh, translated properly. Baked, and here you can see in this paragraph you see a lot of, uh, uh, say, uh, baked or、um, oh, like.、A, They、uh, here mostly use baked, and in one of our video we were mentioning about how we kind of interchange using baking and roasting, but they、mm. seem to have different implications、mm. at some point, and it's just in the English side it wasn't、uh, quite clear. Like、uh, talking baking, I found a lot of people were relating to the final step. Drying. Of the、mm. final drying of yes, the, but this is earlier. This is more talking about pan frying, the uh, uh, kilgrim. Yeah, I just want to、yeah. find that and highlight it. That is important because、Seven、I、line. even if you know tea, yes, may not have baked well. Yes, even as somebody who knows tea、kilgrim. a little bit, I completely right. That's completely I completely misinterpreted that. Right, because that pushed me to the drying, but this is actually the kilgrim. It may not have had the kilgrim. Right.、Ah. Okay, that's very important. Right,、okay. and、uh, and the next one talking about is a overbaked. Is a right. That is actually drying. Yes or no? <laughs> also no. no. Oh goodness me!、Uh, yeah, it's hard to understand. How do you know? Because you really need to know why you, uh, why the leaf is yellow and broken. Is that baking? No, it's again.、Ah. It's more to the green tea talking about、uh, the burn spot, the yellow and the broken. Overly kill green. Yeah,、If、we really have to use the word the, kill green here. I think kill、yes. green would be 
better. And、uh, to be even more specific, it's a pan pan fire、mm. kill green. If、yes. it's a steam green, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't have that burned unless it's ridiculous high, which I don't think any producer、no. would make that mistake,、no. right?、Uh, so it's more of the pan fry you will、right. see, which is the majority of the Chinese green tea. So that's why they、uh, use this as an example, and、mm-hmm. the leaf will be broken because of how high the temperature make that bristle, and brittle,、uh, yeah. brittle. Sorry,、mm-hmm. no, brittle. that's okay. And for the thing. The taste is a thin because it was a plug early or did not ferment well.、Uh, again, we mentioned that it was more of an oxidation.、Um, just want to say that all those are not. Uh, uh, this is for sure caused by this. It's one of the main reason. But、uh, right. we have really have to look at individual teas、mm-hmm. to see what exactly、right. is this problem. Right, and, and there's a- contributing, and of course, like a tea making process, there's also. Uh, the later step can also save the previous step, so step. So、mm. it's really、uh, more complicated than just the, oh, it's murky. It's because of that. Yeah, and that's why I love this process because、uh, in the end, it's all coming down to the taste,、um, which puts the power back into your control without being a super like I've seen Jenny how she can really dissect and you can like look at a leaf and say oh this isn't quite like. It's not a straight up overkill green, and there's so much subtlety, but、um, it's really handy、right. to have a just taste as you got. Right. Maybe we can have a. Look yeah, we have tons、reef. of comments. I was yeah, getting a little. Yeah, it seems so. Then we can move on to the smell. So let me go back. Yeah, I always go. Wow, we've got to go back a bit. Okay. What temperature? Okay, we covered that. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, sure. I always make gong fu with my own experience for temp with each tea, but I know cupping is really. Strict about temperature, so you can standardize brews for one-on-one comparison. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and this is kind of a light cupping light. It's、mm. not really a cupping. It's, it's not quite the cupping. Yeah, and we, uh, the, the way to evaluate and look at this is more、uh, user friendly. I think、yes. that's a user friendly. Yeah, no, that's a great、cupping. term. I think it's really more,、um, much more user friendly and less technical. And the to, the goal here is to get away from all those. To to get away from all those super technical details and let you、mm. enjoy the tea and get down to what it's really about.、Mm-hmm. How does that taste, and what kind of cup can you get out of it? Right. And George says, accept the taste is a great expression. Sometimes you just need to fully experience the flavor of the tea without making a perfect brew. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that and that particular technique gets you all the information, good and bad,、yeah. and that gives you information about how you might adapt your brewing going on, which we'll I see. I think that's the beauty of that. Is、yes. tea doesn't have to be only the perfect brew, like George、mm. was saying. That you can appreciate different sides of a tea. It doesn't、mm. have to be absolutely like, always、yeah. great. Yeah.、Um, and then Josh says, not that I actually do cupping myself. Ah,、uh, in the value. If I'm evaluating a tea, the most I do is pick porcelain or glass over yeasting or,、uh, or other clay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great tip which、uh, we mentioned as well. You want to stay away from those kind of vessels when you're doing an evaluation because you want to get at what's really there, not what not artifacts of the vessel. Yeah. Cindy says, "Sorry, I'm late." No, I'm just kidding. There's <laughs> never a rush. That's why they're recording. Yes. It's really nice. People always say that, but you never have to worry about that.、Mm-hmm. Got some bad news this morning.、Um, oh. I must be watching this in the morning. I hope so. I really hope yeah, that we can. Yeah. Have some brew up with some tea、mm. and just、uh, take your、yeah. mind off the bad news for a bit. Yeah, and tea is great for that.、Mm. Paro says, "Yeah, I noticed that. Almost all Chinese." Did you say Paro? I said, "Yeah, Josh. Josh <laughs>、oh, Paro.、Okay. His name is like Paro." Paro. <laughs> <laughs> um, almost all Chinese tea material I've read, or even French I've spoken to, is fermented to refer. To. Yeah,、mm. and it's not just Chinese. There's a lot of the the Western language is getting straightened out. Visa, I shouldn't say straightened out. It's not really right or wrong, but the old、um, I found the old English standards refer to、uh, black tea as a fermented tea,、mm. uh, straight up. I Which, think it source of the, the it originates in Chinese because if you talk to anybody like in the tea industry,、mm-hmm. we still say like、uh, the fermentation, see, the oxidation level as a fermentation 发酵度 to call that. Just、uh, those are like a colloquial, like more of a daily use. Right. And we kind of know what we are talking about. Right. Right. And.、Uh, 
we like just normally talking to T people, producers, everybody is like that until you talk to somebody who is from universities and labs who is more specific right. about right. that. Uh, uh, if you like learn a bit about the Chinese language itself, we're really losing a lot of things. As long as we are talking on the same page, we're okay, even mm. though what we're saying is wrong. Mm. Like a wasp and hornet. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, there's some history there that we're not going to talk about right now. <laughs> okay, so Josh says to Cindy, sorry to hear, hope everything's okay. We're all pulling mm. for you, Cindy. Enjoy the tea and chill out. <sighs> And Josh says, yeah, I definitely agree about the spoon. I've done some comparison flights at home to compare uh, Lomjing or Oolong, etc. I think the porcelain is super important because the metal has a metal flavor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it eliminates odor. Yeah, stainless has a ne and the tendency also to eliminate odor, which is exactly what we don't want um, on the spoon. We want to see if that lingers. Um, it also holds heat very well without burning your mouth. Mm, yes. And then George Lemon, I see murky soup sometimes in raw puar. Would that be due to the inefficient kill green? Great question. Um, mm. That's a really great question. Yeah. Possible and also different. Uh, the two things that of that is uh, first. Uh, um, sorry, I'm looking for that line. Okay, oh, sorry. Right there, there I find it. Okay, murky soup. Uh, how murky is the murky soup? Your definition, my definition right, might be right. different. So there is something we can talk is about. Is it opaque? Is it a little bit cloudy? Yes. Mm. So with the new puar, usually it is a little bit mm. cloudy, a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, not a transparent, bright and stuff, especially shu puar because of the process. Mm. So there is that. So sh um, did he mention shen wo shu? He's shu. He said shu. Ah, yes. uh, sorry. He said raw puar. A uh, raw puar. Mm. So with the shu, raw puar, you have material oh, also oh, matters. I totally missed that. Um, kill green also matters. Drying also matters. So there's a lots of uh, mm. elements that would uh, contribute as well. So uh, is that just uh, kill green? We cannot see till we see the liquor. Because mm. uh, how pro look at the things are uh, like uh, different elements. You gotta see is that. Something can be cloudy but still have a radiance, so that's a different. Right. So those nuances uh, are right. more to look at, and not uh, straight up but because it's cloudy. It's because of the kill grain. Hmm. Right. And the um, uh, does the age matter too with a with a shen puar? Absolutely. The mm. older it is, the clearer it is. Well, or I, at least I it should be right. It should be like that. Mm. On the other hand. Uh, if you see a lot, there are tea that they can, during the process, make that liquor really clear, bright, and beautiful, right? And you were like, oh, that's a beautiful sip. But you taste it, it's empty, it's mm -hmm. overly dumb. Right. So there's a really a... Sweet spot. Yeah, much. like a tea evaluation is the whole thing. It's mm -hmm. really hard to just look at that and say that's good or that's bad. Right, right. Which is why we always drive at the taste, yes. right? Yes. The, all the information about the tea is in mm -hmm. the taste, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, people send me a picture of a leaf or a picture of a liquor and ask my thoughts and stuff. Right. It's really hard because, you know, yeah. screen has different uh, color, color render, mm -hmm. the, the look, the light, everything affects. So those are really hard to really yeah. tell when you are not just there. And especially without a taste. Right? Yeah, and uh, people are asking for more thorough evaluations. I right. can have some highlights, but not quite a, a full sentence kind of thing. That's right, yeah. And then Josh asks, that was a great question. Yes, Thanks, George. Yes, absolutely. Really good. And Josh says, is baking slash kill green the same as sha tsing? So, um, kill green is sha oh. Kill green is a sha tsing. It's a literal mm -hmm. translation of yeah. the word. And, and personally, I think we should anglicize it. Like, I don't, I really don't like baking as a synonym for kill green. Too confusing to me. Too nebulous can mean drying. Um, I find kill green is clear. It's very, like, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really, at least for tea people, is really specific to that kind of process. Yes, yes. If I was talking to somebody who didn't know anything about tea, I would be inclined to use the word and explain it rather yeah. than say baking or rather than say roasting because 
I'm just like that. I, 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 I like think that's the better way mm. because you are really having the the thought about what baking or roasting is. Yeah. So it's really hard to change that rather than give you a new word, learn something. like. Yeah, and if they're getting into tea, if they're asking me that because they're getting into tea, they're going to come across the word baking and roasting. And I don't want to be the source of them thinking, oh, it's at the Kilgreen. Mm. I want them to know clear this is Kilgreen. And then next time they hear baking, they can ask, oh, is that the Kilgreen? Oh, no, I meant drying. Or yes, I meant the pan fry. Well, on the other hand, like drying, like a... Uh, uh, drying is also really hard really because I, yes. I I would like to use that sometimes because I don't I cannot find a better word but on the other hand the whole tea processing yes even fermenting kill grain all, all of those are dry yes. you know what I'm saying yes, yes. like it's just a lot of uh, explain yes yes if the more you dig in right yeah so Cindy says I would not have interpreted the baking cr- yeah totally agree I totally missed that I completely couldn't have guessed that, that that was Kilgree. Um, I was totally on the drying page. Mm. And George confirms that he believes Shaqing is Kilgree, and you're right, ding ding. <laughs> and George says, yes, could be that. It's normally fresh shampooar it, that's, that's slightly cloudy on the first few infusions. Right. Mm. Okay. And Josh says, I've also noticed some very poor quality green tea that is very cloudy mm-hmm. and not the nice cloudy way mm-hmm. that comes from trichomes a, a GM by how or long yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so you you yeah. Know, and that's another thing we always say too is it's yes. not something you have one cup of tea and now you got it if this is an experience thing a repeat yeah. and try you taste it you see it you yeah. put that in your little database your toolbox then you go back to the table with something mm-hmm. new you try it you have different yeah. experiences and you gotta know what mm. is the taste just want to extend it because the jaws obviously has a lot of experience with the tea and stuff like that mm-hmm. and sometimes you uh, and then he can already tell the difference between you know the trichrome uh, uh, cloudy right, vis-a-vis right. that's very really important and uh, in a more um, professional way of evaluating tea that's our first step second step is the taste to mm. confer it's always you need uh, more than one thing to right. really confer right. an uh, effect of the tea multiple right? sources right so that mm. you know so because you know if the quality of the material is uh, uh, not as good the taste would be thinner or stuff mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that relink with that re- uh, link with the cloudy thing would right. tell you what exactly caused this kind of murkiness so when the uh, kill grain is not sufficient or underneath the it will also demonstrate it itself in the taste of the tea then with the liquor and the taste you can say okay this is cause with that yes so yeah. it really needs a uh, several angles to mm-hmm. look at it mm-hmm. and of course the brew leaf also will tell you if it's mm-hmm. really just the under kill green yeah i have to say i've really enjoyed our times in the field with you and your mom and mm. going through those steps live right mm. where she's brewing the tea she's looking at it she's doing the assessment then she'd have a taste and say mm. some words and then pull out the leaf and, and uh, that's yes. why we asked you to even brew up those uh, raw leaf or half partially processed or, mm. yeah because mm. those uh, flavors are just in that face of the tea it will become mm. uh, much faint and even disappear during the final thing the right. final taste only when you're familiar with that kind of taste when you right. sip the final tea you can say oh can kind of pull that taste was coming from that process right yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the sort of the guru steps. Awesome. All right. So the next section, I just love this. Um, this is the Dr. T Q and A section right here. <laughs> I had to highlight that because uh, I just love that name, Dr. T Q and A. Right. All right. So I'll get on with reading that. I'm going to try and keep it. It's right over. I don't think we're finishing this um, thing. The last two paragraphs. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I read all the way to the bottom. Oh, oh, oh did I miss it, some comments? Uh, I don't know if you have the. Oh, you kind of jumped into the this small screen. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. The last. Oh, two. yes. No, you're right. They didn't say. Um, yes. Oh, I noticed in the picture the she's smelling the liquor. Mm-hmm. But when I read the text, I have to say I thought they were smelling the end. I thought they were looking for bottom cup smell, which is still okay to do, right? Um, yeah, both. Mm. So smell both, right? Smell the liquor and smell the lingering on the porcelain. It kind of was a little bit, it kind of said that, right? It, 
It was more referring to the liquor itself. Yeah, but it says in English the fragrance will remain on the spoon,、mm-hmm. which me- remain means the liquor's gone.、Uh, to And、me. so the last、uh, bit, yeah, yeah. I think the picture was referring to paragraph two. Right, this right. This is paragraph three. So that's the time you smell the spoon or the back of the spoon. Sometimes you will see right. that. And if you go back to the previous chapter, right, we also talked about the bottom cup smell bottom being cup, part of the、important. assessment. Yeah. yeah. So then the um. So this is back to sort of the I was still in a bit of like this the pseudo cupping mood, right? But、mm-hmm. this is an important one where it says that the、uh, in this way the advantages and disadvantages are fully presented. Yes. That's what we're going for, and that comes back to what we were saying earlier. Whereas, and it's an acceptable taste. This isn't how you're going to brew the tea for real.、Mm-hmm. This is where you're looking for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> And then,、uh, yeah, and finally, in four,、uh, four was really good. I think basically、right. they're saying, if it works, don't、yes. miss out. Grab it,、mm-hmm. snap it up. Yeah, I just want to、uh, emphasize this again. It's uh, uh, it's just my personal like observation in the North America. A lot of times, people are bragging about they have the best tea and this like.、Uh, Uh, they have the best、uh, tea. This is、uh, the one like a、uh, really exaggeration with the tea situation, like、uh, like a tournament winning blah 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 stuff like that. Yeah, and、uh, it feel like uh, if uh, you're doing a business, you should only give people the best of the world. Often, see、oh, right, the right. best of the world. This the、uh, it's just not. I don't know if. I never have that when you go buy a T-shirt. Nobody says this is the best of the T-shirt.、Right. Nobody feel bad that you are not giving people the best because people know there's a range.、Mm. Same with other like a whiskey or wine. I go to the liquor store. Like,、uh, you know, it's not just that you can only get the best. There's no shame having something that is twenty dollar wine. It not it might not be mind blowing, but. It's still a good it can、like、be a value, solid, a solid one, right? Solid so that's、value. why in、yes. the end, it's still if the price is proper,、mm. it's really important. It's not like what is the best tea. Oh, that's tea, a really good point. You know. Yes, and also、um, you'll also get lots of other sort. Of, that's seen a marketing trend, right? The best, or you'll read a bunch of stuff on the label about how old it is, or how rare the village is, or something about the story, or blah 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 blah, which is all great. Take it in. Put it in your、mm-hmm. in your vault in your in、mm-hmm. your memory banks, but it all comes、mm-hmm. back to the taste versus the price.、Right? Yeah, yeah, it, that's I think is the king, and it doesn't because a lot of people I found like asking a lot of a、uh, uh, uh, professional like a really really high level hard to answer, but really people want to know. Oh, how do I tell this poor is aged for this year?、Mm. What you need a pro to know is really、right. not a yeah, simple question. It's not a five question, minute thing, right? How do、mm. I know I'm getting the real one, or how do I know if this is、uh, the best tea? Like,、uh, well, you you can be sure you you not many people will encounter the best tea, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so all I'm saying is、uh, no shame that、uh, we're not drinking the best tea. We're drinking what the tea we like. The tea that we think is a reasonable price. I think that's nothing wrong with that. There's、yeah. no shame in it. The, I don't the, have to say that's the and best. And the opposite、tea. is true too. We've had some friends come to us with tea and say, "Oh, I think this is, I think this is a fake. It's supposed to be blah blah blah. I got it for X dollar, and we drink it, and we're like, 'Well, you're you're right, but this is a fine tea. Right? No problem. Like,、uh, right, I'm drinking、that. every day. Somebody tell you that's a I 1980 Puar and it's 20 bucks, but it tastes great." That's a twenty dollar tea. It tastes great. Grab、right. that. Don't worry. And I drink tea every day. I just cannot afford to drink some、yeah. who are like twenty, thirty years right. every right. every day. It's just too expensive. What's wrong with that? So again, for us, I really want to emphasize that having a tea you like and the reasonable price, it's perfect.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we're still good on the comment side, so we'll、right. we'll、okay. go on to my、uh, my long-awaited section, the Doctor T Q and A. All right, I just think that's so fancy. <laughs> How to avoid the bitter taste?、Mm. The hotter the water, the more bitter the taste.、Mm-hmm. If the temperature of water is lower, the taste will be less bitter. Bring down the temperature of water can reduce strong bitterness. If the tea is too puckery. Besides lowering the temperature of the water, please shorten the brewing time. 
Adding more tea or extending the brewing time if personally prefer the bitterness of tea with a preference of astringency. Please increase the tea quantity. Okay, so pretty, the, it started out uh, pretty great. Um, mm -hmm. Straight relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, more, the hotter the water, the more bitterness you're going to pull out. Okay, the longer you brew, the more astringency you're going to pull out. That's sort of the first half of the paragraph. But in the second half, they seem to say that again, mm -hmm. but in a really confusing way. Um, so um, adding more, they, and they talk a little bit about adding more leaf as well. So there's a leaf in brew time kind of introduced. And because of the way the sentences are kind of structured, I got, I just assume they're saying the same thing again, but I'm not sure. Yes, I think uh, just the highlight what really matters, mm. what's really going on is talking about uh, water temperature, brewing time, vis-a-vis -vis bitterness and astringency. Right. What's the relationship? Yes. So... Uh, okay, so we pretty much got it then from that yeah. first chunk, right? Yeah, yeah. Hotter water, more mm -hmm. bitterness, mm -hmm. longer brew time, more astringency. Yes. And then, of course, longer brew time can be substituted by more leaf. Right, right, right. So that's really in a, a, a daily drinker view of if I have the tea, what can I do, right? A oh, lot of times... Like, we didn't even cover puckery. Puckery oh, is astringency, right. which is a mouthfeel. Um, mm. Bitterness yes, is more bitterness of Bitterness is the flavor. Astringency is the mouthfeel mm. that uh, fills your mouth. Kind of dries your mouth and make it feel like you're... I don't know, this is a weird way mm. to describe it, but I sometimes feel like the skin on my mouth is shrinking. That kind of a ah, feeling, like yeah. it's tightening. Yeah, or if you mm. have like a, uh, another good example is a grape, like grape seed or grapes, mm. uh, grape uh, oh, yeah. skin. They mm. also have that mm. uh, as a tannin, right? Is that tannin? Tannins. Tannins. Mm. You know, that I think, causes I think so. that. Yeah. So uh, bitterness, astringency are uh, something that we don't want in tasting great tea, but it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Because if you like a well, drink for health, uh, for your own health, those are great for mm. your health. Yes. So a lot of people, they're like uh, getting into tea for from the health benefits area. We often recommend them to go with a lower quality uh, clean tea so that you have the better price and the better um, of those content rather than spending more money on those tasting green teas, which we don't want much of those. That's why we do butts. That's why the process has to be perfect. Mm. And uh, a lot of times we have a tea that as a tea drinker, I cannot alter the quality of it anymore because right. it's already made. So yes. the best we can do is to brew, uh, kind of accentuate its beauty while mm -hmm. trying to bring down the- Brew it like a champ. Yes, right. and even at the end, it mentions if you like that really bitter and astringent, mm -hmm. just put on more tea and stuff. So that's also very okay. Yeah. People have different preference. You, you brew tea however you that's like. That's right. You've got to dial that into your liking. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then uh, there's a couple comments there from Josh. He says, uh, fun fact about puckery tea. Mm. You guys might uh, know, but people, most people probably wouldn't. I'm going to tea. I'm going to assume that puckery means astringent learned about astringency is that it isn't actually a taste like most people say yes it's a mouth feel yeah mouth sensation from the latin astringere which means to pull a string oh interesting oh, i didn't know the astringere oh. part that's very cool hmm interesting didn't know that. and literally refers to the physical sensation of the mouth muscles contracting but not taste like yeah yeah that's right it's not a technically a taste but yeah of course ofc you guys know about astringency but i just thought that the etymology is really, oh, really, really yeah. interesting. Yes. I love that. And Astringere. always good to add on what we're explaining or even correct us if we're not saying yeah, that yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, D. Severs, Severis Feed, I don't know if I pronounced that right, sorry, said thanks. Mm. And George says, bitterness can sometimes lead to Huegan sweetness also, oh, big time. Mm, which absolutely. is one of my favorite parts of the tea. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. And yeah. especially like uh, uh, in poor. Uh, mm. You know, like uh, <laughs> why banjang gets so famous is because it's super bitter and astringency. As mm. uh, however, different tea quality you realize in Chinese tea tasting, we we care about 
we use the word "huo" means flexible, agile, and stuff. So we、mm. like the tea that is very swift changing. So the good,、mm. good bitter, like a good pour, we love that bitter astringent. However, we like that、uh, quick switch. How fast does the hui gan appear really、right. matters to、right. the tea、yeah. quality. You don't want to have to suffer through it waiting yeah, for the hui gan two minutes、really、later. Yeah, some are really long. Yeah, some are really long. Some are instant、uh, return sweet and, and stuck like this. <laughs> oh, right. There we go. And if we, sometimes when we have like raw pour that is overly bitter or astringent to our liking, just age them. That those are the materials that's gonna trans. No, transform, transform, transform into that、uh, goodness when it's aged. Mm. 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 Cool, and I think that gets us caught up. So、um, maybe you call that a day because of the technical issue. I feel like we're. Ah、uh, no, I th- I don't know. We we didn't start till twenty minutes past. So、oh, my thought、we? is, yeah,、oh, my thought is、okay. let's keep rocking.、Okay. If you guys are cool, we're gonna keep on rocking to the、uh, second part. Um, okay, the boss said,、uh, "Let's keep on rocking." Yeah, let's just do this. We're we're rocking and rolling. <laughs> so here we are. We're now on the amount of tea. I hope you guys all had lunch.、Mm. Oh, are you hungry? Oh, oh. No, not so hungry. Not so hungry. <laughs> George says, "Yeah, you sometimes you wait through a very difficult astringency and it never turns, and it never turns around." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a little disappointing, right? Right. All right, the amount of tea. People who are from different places have different tastes. Even in one place, they have different preferences on the taste of tea. Therefore, there is not an absolute rule to determine the quality of leaves in the pot. This just depends on the tea drinker. For example, the same oolong tea, which is regarded as scented tea rather than gongfu tea in the north, put some oolong tea in the porcelain pot. The color, the fragrance, are not bad. According to tea types, according to the types, generally by the proportion of the quantity of tea and water while brewing in the cup, the tea and water is usually in a ratio of one to fifty. It is suitable for brewing with half more water. While brewing in the pot, according to the types of tea, the amounts are not the same. For Iron Mercy goodness, the amount is one quarter to one third of the pot's volume. For Wuyi rock tea, the amount is usually half or two thirds of the volume, even eighty percent. For the pressed tea, the amount of tea is reduced to a ratio of one fifth or a quarter. Maybe we'll go over that and then do the set last two paragraphs、I、after, because、so. that's a pretty、so. good chunk, right? Yeah, yeah. So peril one、uh, is、uh, basically, I think, is pretty understandable, actually. Different strokes for different folks, right? People in different areas and even in the same place have different preferences on how they like to brew their tea.、Mm. Not overly shocking. Yes.、Um, I have to say though that the ending goes on、um, and talks about oolong tea in the north, and I didn't really get much out of that. I'm not sure what's being said there. I was it was a little bit too chunky、right. as somebody who was just reading this. I、right. think that might be tricky to understand. Yeah. So, so the first part, like you said, it was about different、mm. people, right, and different regions and stuff. So the last bit was an example of、uh, people in the north. They don't. The way they drink, like even oolong, they drink because in the north people drink more jasmine green tea. So how they brew, just put some leaves in the pot、mm. and brew it. Even when it's a oolong tea, they use their old way, same way to brew right, it. Right. Of course. Right, so that's what that was about. So how they brew oolong was still put in that. However, this uh, uh, I just wanted to say every book, everything they have their own time zone. This is a two thousand, right? Oh, the you mean by the book when it was written is yeah, sort of and it、that. was talking about like、uh, the、right. more traditional north. Nowadays, you go to north, a lot of people no oolong, no gongfu tea,、right. they still drink that. So it's quite a different, and if you go a little bit like ten years old earlier, like in the nineties, how they drink tea is even more different.、Right. I was gonna say crazy, then I was like, no, just yeah, different. Yeah, too harsh. Too harsh. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Not right gonna、on. comment. Right.、Mm. So okay, so great. So now in para two, it 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 got pretty hard to understand. I th- I think 
I think ba the basics, again, are all really easy to capture. We're basically going over our leaf to water ratios, mm -hmm. but the, um, I think because of the, the translation, it might be hard for somebody new to know what's going on. So here's what I got out of it. If you're brewing in a cup, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure a lot of people, even there, did they use the word cup? Yeah, they use the word cup. So basically, I'm not sure a lot of people know if we use mugs here, which I guess right. it would work in a mug, yes. but it tends to be a glass tumbler. Uh, yeah, we China, have mug right? too. Oh, we even mug. have mug with the lid. Okay, and the ratio is one to fifty, basically. Mm -hmm. I found that okay. That's great, but that's, that's mostly green tea and black tea. Right, and that yes. ratio is really tricky to visualize. It's a little bit too stretched out, right? One to fifty. So I think what is what would be nice if we this is more like a, a, a specific, like a pro expert level telling you this right, as right. the guy. I think it's like kind of cover the bottom a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So just then it depends on what shape of your tumbler is. You know, you sometimes have those right. narrow yes. and yeah. wide yeah. or vice versa. But the gist of it is roughly 1 to 50. Got it. And, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter with your eyes. Kind yeah, of just thing. eyeball it. I it doesn't have to be identical. And this is not a street, strict uh, like rules you have to follow. Yeah, I yeah. think that's kind of what I wanted to kind right. of add because... I don't want people to pull out a scale and measure, okay, I'm going to put in 100 ml of water, so I need, uh, what would that even be, 5 grams of tea? Yeah. I just <laughs> want to say those are, oh yeah, yeah, that's for black tea, it's perfect, but <laughs> what I'm saying is those are just guidelines, Right. and because when you go to specific teas and specific, uh, even under the same tea, say Tie Guan Yin, different Tie Guan Yin, they have mm. different looks, so you brew them slightly different, that's the guideline of it when you just start to practice and later on you will become better and uh, have more just adjustment right right yeah. so that's where they said the 1 to 50 here but th then they also said with half more water which I thought and I think I was wrong yeah I thought that meant with half so that means 1 to 50 or 1 to 75 but I don't think that's what they mean <laughs> at all but that's what it sounds like so that's a uh, uh, like in the logic way is more like a two level talking first the mm. leaf and water one to fifty second then you gotta add water to your tumbler mm. then you gotta we never fill everything yeah. to the bottom uh, to the top so this is okay. what you're saying you fill the cup to 70 to 80 percent right and use one to fifty of the water not the cup volume mm. okay that makes sense because that wasn't really obvious at all right right uh, and then the next part says, well, brewing in the pot, mm -hmm. which I interpreted as a either Chinese a, teapot. a yeasting teapot, or I guess Gaiwan works too, right? Yeah, um, so like a Chinese a Gongfu brewing vessel of that size. Gongfu, right. So not a big teapot. Right, right on. So if folks are new, Gongfu is basically brewing in a Gaiwan or brewing mm -hmm. in a Chinese small teapot. where the Basically a small vessel, multiple infusions. Right, and the leaf to water ratio is more in these zones, which they call right. out, right? Right. A quarter, a third, and so on, which I think that is all pretty clear. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I thought was interesting though, so they've got, and they, they called, uh, they said for Taeguan Yin, yeah. I think people can use this guideline for any bald oolong, right? Yongcheng yes. Focho, uh, Focho, sorry, sorry. I <laughs> he always, keeps calling that a stinky. <laughs> yeah, he keeps saying stinky, but it's Yongcheng Focho, um, or any bald oolong, that'll work. And then your Wu Yi Yan Chai, you could use that for your straight oolong, mm -hmm. um, half or two-thirds volume. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about press tea, mm -hmm. which I think is Hei Cha. Yes. Right? Usually Hei Cha. Right, and I think... Uh, what is interesting is they quote unquote left out green tea, which I think is because we usually brew that in a cup, which was already covered. Because of that 1 to 50 is mm. usually using a green and black. Yes. Mm. So there, I just wanted, if people were familiar with tea, they're like, where are my other categories? Mm. They go with that, they go with that one. Don't cool. worry, the book covers that later. This is yeah, it's going to get into, this is sort of the, again, the high, the highlights. Yeah. You want to check uh, the comment? Yeah, sure. Um, and George says, that's usually to wait, wait, no. Josh says, aha, I'll always watch as long as you guys are want to stream. Ah, thanks, Josh. George says he has to go. Oh, see you, George. Catch you later. Uh, been mm -hmm. lovely. We'll be sure to check out the rest of the series as well as the rest of this episode. Cool. Well, then I, then I didn't waste my see you later. I caught yes. you a bit late. And I hope you have a good day, too. Yeah, awesome. 
And Josh says, I have a quick question about these amounts. Are they for daily drinking or is she still referring to the one make method? Oh, that's a good no, question. No, no. This um, one is daily. This is your, this whole section yeah. is about uh, the daily, how to yeah. brew how to, how to actually brew. That's a great question. So, mm. and uh, I, uh, lots of, uh, I, am I weird? I, I have a Hario Arista scale for measuring my teas. A Hario? Oh, it's a, like a, a really, uh, I think it's, scale. I think instead of the, you know, we have the cold brew vessel, I think they have a scale. Oh. For, um, oh, wow. maybe for coffee making or for tea as well, I'm not sure. Oh, no, you're cool. not weird. That's perfectly that's normal, weird. Josh. A lot right. of people pull out the scale when they... Yeah, really high-tech yeah, scales, yeah. yeah. I'm just so lazy. Yeah, and I think uh, I really like the intuitiveness. When I sit down to tea, I rarely pull out a scale. I like to just look at my gaiwan. Uh, I also think about who's all br I'm brewing. Am I going to fill the gaiwan or h partly fill it and just kind of go with the liquor color? If you check out all of our, any of our how-to videos, we have how-to brew videos which go into detail for specific teas. You'll notice mm -hmm. that a lot of these guidelines are generally that's basically how we roll. Yes. We try to get get you to uh, step away from the scale, step away from the thermometers, and just have some mm. time with your tea kind of thing. Mm. Mm. All right, I'm going to carry on with para th with the third para. So mm. geographically, Tibet, Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, and other ethnic minority areas live on meat and lack of vegetables. As a result, tea has become their physical necessities. The people there prefer strong tea, therefore consume more tea. People of Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and neighborhood provinces prefer dragon well tea or advanced green tea, and usually smaller porcelain cup or glasses, less consumption each time. Yeah. However, people in the southern part of Yu in the southern part like Yunnan, Guizhou, Guangdong, Fujian prefer the semi-ferment, advanced packaged tea such as Wu Yi rock tea, Puar, etc. They are in a little shape, but more amount. The key amount of consumption is to master the ratio of tea and water. The more amount, the less soaking time. Otherwise, less tea, longer soaking time. Mm -hmm. Thus, if the temperature is higher, shorten the soaking time. Otherwise, the same. If you are a newcomer, you might try more and find the one you prefer and make it as your own standard. Okay, I love these paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one is basically talking a little bit about geographic preferences. I think the, um, just from an interest sake, the whole Tibet, Xinjiang, la live on meat and lack of vegetables is interesting. As a Westerner, mm. I know you introduced me to that and I was a little bit like shocked because, you know, at, at least a, in, as a modern person, all the groceries are everywhere in the world all the time now. Right. But China is really historic and people have like, there's really deep food culture and they have that sort of, I think it's pretty weird I for people. Like, when you say that, I was like, I, we never had a, I never had a, like a life or something talk about my trip to uh, Tibet because it's so different for me too. And I oh. learned a lot too. Because when you right. say that, I was like, mm, it's not only hard for you to imagine, it was hard for me okay. to imagine okay, that's good at to that know. time. Cause how their situation is mm. and uh, the traffic like the the most common things are so expensive anything mm. touches the veggie or stuff because it's so remote right yeah so they don't grow mm. those things mm. and uh, everything is through transportation mm. and you don't have so many roads get into the way to go into Tibet is still based on the ancient uh, tea horse road mm. just those are Beautiful for roads and stuff. It was a major thing, right? right. So it was really uh, interesting and uh, they are more like a, What was that that uh, northern cow or something? Oh the uh, yak yak the right. yak they do yak and they mm. or even try the pure raw can no, cantaloupe cantaloupe the, the, No, that's a fruit. That's right? a fruit. I got that mixed up antelope and oh, raw antelope. They eat that raw. Right. So I tried one. So I think basically, so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just want to say those, uh, those area in the very west and north in the high plains like Tibet and Xinjiang is slightly north of Tibet and uh, Mong Mong Mongolia, you guys probably know Mongolia. The more, Mongolia, yeah, Mongolia. Those way they don't grow much veggies stuff. Mm -hmm. So tea is their veggies. 
So here it mentions that it drink more. It not only means they drink more tea. When you when they brew the tea, they put because they boil and everything, they put mm -hmm. more leaves. Yeah. So, but so for me to see that to, to read that tea has become their physical necessity. No. Oh, yeah. A, it's hard to imagine. It's not like they like tea and they have to have it. Like like a lot of us tea lovers feel. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. tea's a necessity for me too. Mm -hmm. I think and that's I, I, different. I think it's really different. That's I don't different. even know. I think it's. I don't think I can imagine how it's woven into their life. It's, it's more like a think about the wheat and the corn in the uh, country as the uh, national it's security. It's a real it's staple It's very for important them. things. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to highlight that because when I first got into it and heard that, I kind of glossed over it. Do you it. think we should do a Tibet thing? Absolutely. We should definitely that should do that. should be pretty fun. That would be really fun and see if they want to hear more about Tibet and that, mm. that whole culture. But anyway, when I heard that it was a necessity, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a tea lover. Tea's a necessity for me too. Right, and I just right. wanted to say like, no, it's different. It's no. more like wheat or, or corn or soy is a necessity yes. for some cultures. Yes. It's it's just, yes. it it's the underpins their existence kind of. Absolutely. Um, so that's the part, um, that's one thing I wanted to mention. Then it goes on to Zhejiang. Uh, the advanced green tea is super <laughs> cute. I wasn't sure what that meant at all. Yeah, it's I, just uh, compared to regular exporting tea, is um, a little bit higher grade. Right. It doesn't mean top grade, right? No, it just no, means decent not. green tea, yeah, right? You know, us, we have like a regular green tea, we call that a high end green tea. Like it's a term. Right. <laughs> it doesn't right. mean much. It just right. means a little bit better than exporting tea. Right. And then the thing in the salt mm. that I noticed, which is really interesting, is mm. they. Again, you got this prefer semi-ferment advanced package, which now they're using the word fermented both ways because they go on to say Wu Yi rock tea, mm -hmm. semi-oxidized, mm -hmm. and Puar, mm -hmm. fermented tea. Mm -hmm. So this is, I found that this is a kind really of a, muddy. It's really muddy. You're yeah. right. Even in Chinese, it was really muddy. It's more right. just a roughly covered, like. give is to give people who just get into tea have the overall mapping situation about how people are having tea. Right. Like you cannot say poor tea people there use little gong fu, they don't. They yeah. all times throw that in the mug right. and drink or boil that in the And we should also mention, bar. come back to the time of this book was a while ago. Things have moved, people are doing things differently now possibly. The, in general, I think this is still largely bang on. Mm -hmm. But um, Absolutely. You know, who knows when 20 years what's going to happen. Mm. And then in the anything else in the pair of three that I missed, I think that I think you got most of it. What is just the shows that different pe different people from different region have different way of brewing. Yeah, and pair of four has got to be my all time favorite. Mm -hmm. Basically, saying a recap of everything we covered here, right? Mastering. So the tea is done. When you have it on your table, you as a tea brewer, mm -hmm. your last chance to quote unquote improve the quality is mm. is your interaction with the tea, right? It's the water to tea ratio, and they give you some guidelines. More, more tea. Don't you don't need to steep as long. Less tea, soak it a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Higher temperature, you shorten. More mm -hmm. temperature, you reduce the time again. Yeah. But most important, play with it. Have fun with it. Absolutely. Find the brew that works for you. That's the right brew mm. for that tea, mm. right? Yes. And then share that with your friends and say, Let's taste this killer tea. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Then they'll go home and they won't be able to do it because they won't know your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Patent. Yes. So anyway, I love that. I, mm. I think that's what we always, we, we like Jen T, Jen and I always try to get, when new people are getting into tea, is really nudge them in that direction is don't yeah. worry. Start with the package. If you don't know anything about the tea, yeah. that's always a good start. Yeah. Um, but then feel it out. Just sort of like Josh said, yeah. he does. Always just play Again, with it. Again, feel like a, a maybe because uh, just a, the type of the tea business we're in, like I do a lot of times, I feel like there's a lot of shame or right they're like uh, nervous about things so like uh, you know am i brew that right right or wrong good or bad a lot mm -hmm. of t most of the time i think it's a professional like you we're uh you know buying teas as merchants as a education educator or something mm. we tell people that when we go 
when we help a producer, we should we need to be able to right. tell. Those are details. So I gotta know yes. what's right. Or when I'm buying quanti big quantity of tea, I gotta know: Am I paying a hundred dollars for something only worth twenty dollars? Right. It's very important for us. Like we are important. Like the connection between customers, mm -hmm. daily tea drinkers, and to that, and yeah. the people who drink tea don't necessarily have that knowledge. Yes. They really depend on need. us. Yes. yes, we need that. So we need to know that. On the mm -hmm. other hand, as a daily tea drinker. We don't have to have to understand what's the right way. It's really about what I'm mm -hmm. drinking every day. That's yes. and, like and there's the, no shame or that's right. there's no wrong way that how you like it. You like yeah. it that bitter, astringent, go for it. That's you right. like that and light, understanding the relationships in general and how they work gives you the ability to then adjust that to your life. That's Absolutely. about what you need, right? Right. right. All right, let's check out the comments. Mm. Um, and we've got Oh, Cindy, did you use a scale before you were experienced enough? Well, hang on, I think there's quite a few comments. Guys, you overwhelming us. That's great. I have a quick question about the amounts. Yeah, perfect. We already did that. So Cindy comes in. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, there's the Hario scale. So Cindy uh, comments, did you use a scale before you were experienced enough to brew intuitively? I'm getting better at estimating, but still use a scale most of the time while I'm learning. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the only time we use a scale is when we're doing uh, not uh, one part of our professional evaluation, which is uh, cupping, and it's intensive cupping, like mm. a three, five, like when I have a, a several teas I'm evaluating at the same time, and none of those are pinnacle grade teas, we use cupping and we use scale. Mm. So that's the only time I use that during right. like if I'm just brewing and stuff, it's kind of like <laughs> it might be a bad uh, example. It's like uh, how do I know I'm full when I'm eating? You mm. know, I eat a little bit too much. I feel like that's too much. So I right. like eating like next a, time you uh, back up a, a little bit. Yes, yes, back just a, a trial and a success. And mm -hmm. at some mm -hmm. point, you find out in this process, you're more like connected with the tea because I the reason we're not very on for this uh, scale is people are really focused on the number mm. they forgot to adjust because of the tea and the vessel size and the vessel size right. or sometimes we're traveling we don't have ideal situation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but just go back to the tea itself we're talking about our say Tiguanyin classic or t autumn Tiguanyin they're different shapes even though they're Tiguanyin, you might want to put them differently. The Tiguanyin classic, you want to put the tea amount of the almost the Wuyi style mm -hmm. amount, while the classic is the the more typical rolled shape. So you want to put that in a different amount. Yep. Or you compare our autumn Tiguanyin vis-a-vis -vis somebody else's Tiguanyin. The roll, are they tied to the right. same? We're not. Are the leaves the same size when they unfurl? Right? right. So you really, because uh, you're trying to do that intuitively, it doesn't mean I'm guessing. It means I am observing mm -hmm. the tea, the shape, and uh, adjust that a little bit more, a little bit less accordingly. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's nothing wrong using a scale to help, mm -hmm. but uh, just always I always say like you have to look at the leaves. Yeah. Then maybe you usually use a three gram, and today you because of this specific tea, you think yeah. a three point three is a better yeah. gram. We um I still struggle with we drink a lot of oolong. We mm -hmm. tend to be oolong centric. Obviously, we drink a lot of dark tea. I'm really good at eyeballing those amounts, mm -hmm. but I still struggle with green tea amount and um, black tea a little bit less because I tr I drink a lot of black tea in the morning, mm. but um. But the, that, the guide that we just went over, which is in your gaiwan with rolled oolong, about one third full of the gaiwan, mm -hmm. and about two thirds for the straight. Um, basically, you want the gaiwan to be like this one, almost full. This is slightly less. I would yeah, like that Yeah, it's a little bit less. More. I poured that, um, I, I put that, uh, this happened to be five grams too. But you see, I weighed this, which I almost never do. Ah, what did I do wrong? I don't know. I don't think anything is wrong. Oh, I want that to go Yeah, on. better do. Uh, I think we're okay. okay. I think we're still here. Okay. The chat is gone. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah. This side has suddenly disappeared. Okay, we'll have to get that back somehow. Oh, oh just that? No? No, I don't see it. 
Well, we can't see the chat anymore, so hopefully we'll, we'll figure out how to yeah. get that back. You can play with that while I keep well, talking. That. Anyway, so you want the guy one to be full, so those are really good guidelines, and just start to play with it. Um, mm. Well, that's unfortunate. Ah. All right. Oh. Well, oh, I know back. where it is. No, since it's, we're it's done here. the paper. It's here. Here's where it. We can go back since we're done this. No? Go back where? To the other view. Since we're done the book. It still doesn't have chat though. The Which other view. Oh, this, this is, is the view. This is the view. I don't know where the chat went. So oh. guys, we lost our chat, so we can't see, see your if my cell other phone questions. Can have that. Yeah, see if you can pull it up there. I think we're still live. Oh, the title is gone and everything. Oh boy. I think oh, gonna... I found that on my cell phone, I think. Are yeah. we even live? Our camera is still on. Yeah, it? yeah. I think it's live. We can fin the title continue. The gone and everything. Anyway. No, it's alive. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yes. Today Switch is our day for, uh, for challenging. <laughs> So Cindy was the last comment we, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you got it yeah. all set up. So I guess it's also a frugality thing. If I have 24 grams of poire left, I like to be able to divide it in two. Mm. Though I don't use thermometer or anything. Right, right. Yeah, there's all, yeah, I never yeah, thought yeah. of that. But yeah, you want to kind of make sure it ends on a nice amount so you can brew it. Absolutely. And oh, I yeah. don't measure my amounts, my water amounts or anything. I just like to know how much tea I'm using. I only do crazy measure and timing knots as if I'm making pour over coffee, but never for tea. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess that's more important. Yeah. After years of making tea, I prefer to just do it naturally, but one habit I never changed is weighing my tea. I guess also because some teas are very deceptive in their weights. Mm. Oh yeah, yes. that's so true. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Like the Baihao Yingzhen, the top grade Baihao Yingzhen, they are so little. Like compared to like a bai mu dan that looks big, right. but it's so heavy. They're dense, huh? Yeah, the, yeah. those little buds were dense. And bai at silan is one of our heaviest rolled oolongs. Mm. They're pretty small little balls, but they're yeah. heavy. And then, uh, oh, and about Tibet, Mongolia, I would love to hear more. I also watched a doc about tea there, and I learned that because of the attitude and harsh conditions, they require nutrients from tea to survive. Yeah, mm. yeah, re it's sort of a weird phenomenon for us to think about. Mm. I'm still yes I, and no. Some region in Tibet is really great uh, landscape. Like uh, we even call it like uh, Jiangnan, like uh, Jiangsu and Zhejiang province. Oh, that farm area. Yeah, Tibet mm. really have a lot diverse, of uh, diverse um, topology or mm. geography. Even though right. most of the time we think of like that, right? Like a really barren area. Nutrients. They need nutrients to survive. Can't remember exactly which compounds, perhaps oh. phytonutrients, but I don't remember. Also about weighing amounts, it also depends on the strength of the tea. I prefer almost exactly 10 to 11 grams of guar, but with baihao or a mild tea or dansong, it doesn't matter to me. Mm. Ah. All right. Oh, we're still live too. Here's some comments here. <laughs> We've just had a really technically challenging day. So anyway, here we Days. go. I feel like yeah. in my we'll get this smoothed out. Yes. We'll get the, I didn't even use the uh, I didn't even use the transitions too much, but there we oh. go. I, we got another Batman transition with the guy one. We're back, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess. Oh, I have. A, I even have a Tibet tea we can brew as we talk about Tibet. Oh, cool, cool. Get mm home -hmm. or a different one? No, no, mm. from the oh, tea. Oh, really nice, really nice. From Tibet, like grown and made in Tibet. Okay, so from we'll do that. Area? That'll be its own. Uh, we might do that in a live or a video. I'm not we don't sure. Know. Leave the comment below. What do you want to see? I think a live is a uh, more fun. I it's don't know. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. So save me work of editing. <laughs> yeah, let us know what you'd like to see. I think that about wraps it up for this Sunday mm. Tea Talk. Um, of course, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like today's content. I think it was really fun, yeah. really and uh, useful, meaty content. Yes. And. Uh, yeah, uh, click the notify bell and all those YouTube cliche things. Mm -hmm. Just a little preview. We're going to oh, dive yes, into yes, tea one. vessels like tea sets, or the teapot and stuff in the next few uh, yeah. sessions. So be sure to tune in or watch after. Yeah. And until next time, keep, keep steeping. Bye-bye. Did I say sleeping? <laughs> I think you said steeping. Steeping, steeping. steeping.